You're watching Triple Threat Sports. And cheerleaders. Okay. Welcome to another edition of Triple Threat Sports. For today's episode, we are going to discuss the state of the New York Mets. It's June 5th, 2014. June 6th, 2014. <laughs> Our Mets have just come off a pretty, pretty, a very frustrating three-game sweep of off of the Chicago Cubs. They got swept by, swept in Chicago. The Cubs are probably, not probably, definitely the worst team in uh, baseball at the moment. So the Mets had a five-game series, a very long, exhausting, extra inning affair, five-game series with the Phillies where they won four out of five. Then they go to Chicago and get swept three straight by the worst team in baseball. And now they start a, se- a series in San Francisco against the best team in baseball. So where, where are the Mets right now? Well, looking at the big picture... So far this season, we've uh, we've seen the young pitching progress a little bit. Zach Wheeler is pitching better. Jacob Degrom, even though he wasn't great yesterday, he's been solid. He's walked a lot of people, but he's been solid his first few starts. Uh, Afiel Montero made his appearance. Now he's back in the minors. He was shaky, but he has potential. We all know about the young pitching. We've heard about it. We've heard about the young pitching for years. We know it's here. We know it's on the way. The bullpen is looking better. They moved Henry Mejia to the bullpen. They uh, called up Vic Black, finally. He's been pitching well. Uh, Familia is pitching well. So they must have arms and young arms in the bullpen. And they have young arms on the field. John Neese has stepped up well. So the rotation is looking good. The bullpen is looking good. They have some young pieces they can move around, possibly. The only thing is their lineup is from hunger. You can make a case right now that the New York Mets lineup, they can't score runs, they can't hit with their bases loaded, they can't hit with men on base. I mean, they are, they are historically bad with the bases loaded. But anyway, they, they can't, the lineup sucks. They can't score runs. And you can make a case right now that the Mets may have, may have, and this, this is a, a strong statement, but they may have literally the worst lineup in baseball right now. Certainly in the bottom five. And here's the problem with the Mets going forward. Now, 2014 was supposed to be the big year that the Mets turn the corner and the Mets start contending again and the Mets go have a good cycle of baseball. For, it hasn't happened. Matt Harvey getting injured, obviously, was a, a big uh, step back. Uh, Noah Syndergaard, uh, he, hasn't made his, he hasn't made his debut yet. It should be soon, but he's been dealing with some injuries, too. He got hurt last night in the minor leagues. But the lineup, again, the pitching is there, the lineup. And here, here's the worst part of it, because not only is the lineup bad now, there's really nobody in the minor leagues that's coming up. There's pitching in the minor leagues. There's no hitting in the minor leagues that's, that's going to come up and make an impact for the Mets going forward now or even next year, maybe even a year after that. The years away from their minor league is the minor league system, the farm system pitching, uh, producing hitters. And... Let's face it, the Wolfhounds still don't seem to have any money. They have very little money to spend, so we can't go out and buy a bat. So, on one hand, you want to be excited with the Mets, young pitching, bullpen. But on the other hand, there's a, it's a, you can despair very easily because the lineup is terrible. And again, there's no help coming from the farm system for the lineup, and there's no money to spend on big, big time free agents. So, where does that leave us? <clears throat> the only option, the only way forward seem, would seem to be to trade some of our young pitchers, pitching pieces, whether that's Jacob DeGrom, whether that's Noah Syndergaard, whether that's, you're not going to get rid of Matt Harvey or Zach Wheeler, whether that's Rafael Montero, whether that's Dylan G, who's injured at the moment, but he'll be back soon. He's been pitching well for the past year. Whether that's John Neese. A trade has to be made to bring in uh, some hitters. Now, there's two ways that can go. On one hand, you can kind of put all your pieces, all your minor league pieces, whether it's uh, pitchers or hitters, and you can try to trade for one big impact bat, you know, like a a franchise-changing bat, like the Mets did with Piazza many years ago, a superstar hitter. Trade your young pitchers, young pieces for a superstar hitter, an established hitter, the only thing is that if you look over baseball right now, I don't see that guy. Who is that guy they're going to trade for? Giancarlo Stanton's not coming to the Mets. The Marlins aren't going to trade him. 
Carlos Gonzalez is always, you know, a possibility. Troy Tudowitzki, but I doubt they're going to be traded either. The Rockies have started out good. Now they're doing they're doing poorly now, but they don't seem inclined to trade them. Certainly not. Certainly not at the deadline. Maybe in the off season. Paul Goldschmidt, Diamondbacks, they're doing better. Again, why why would they trade him? He's the only good player they have. So I mean, I don't. It's hard to see who the impact bat's going to be, especially from a contending team. A contending team, a contending team at the deadline in July is not, is not going to trade their best hitter for young prospects. It's going to have to be a team that's out of it, and I, I don't see who that hitter is going to be. So, another way to go is to trade your young pitchers, your young pieces, for a, another team's young pieces, like the Cubs. The Cubs have many young; they have an army of prospects in their mind, their farm system that are position players. But they need pitches. The Mets have the opposite. The Mets have pitches. They need they need uh, everyday players. So maybe a trade could be worked out with the Cubs. You know, Javier Baez, Chris Bryant. Those guys might be out of reach. But they have some other guys that the Mets might want to trade for. And there's another interesting market that's developing, possibly, in that if you look at some teams in, in contention, like the Oakland A's, they're in first place. The Toronto Blue Jays, they're in first place. The Baltimore Orioles are hanging around in, so far. The Dodgers even. They all need second baseman. And the Mets have a second baseman. Again, he's one of their better players, Daniel Murphy. He's uh, probably their second best hitter on the team after David Wright. They, um, he's been bad in the field this year. And he's been bad on the bases. But he's still a very solid player. And he could be appealing for a contending team. Now, do you, do you go in that direction? As my daughter cries up there, do you uh, do you go in the direction of trading Murphy, maybe breaking it, make it breaking the major league lineup down even further, hoping to bring back maybe Murphy and a Dylan G, Murphy and a pitcher, bring it back a prospect from the A's or the Blue Jays. Do you go in that direction? Do you trade? Uh, it's an interesting market because there will be a market for second baseman. The A's need it, the A's, Blue Jays, Orioles, Dodgers, even the Giants possibly. I mean, they can all use a second baseman. That could be a market for the Mets to consider. So that's one way to go. In fact, I'd probably lean in that direction myself. Then there's, I don't know, there's, uh, you, you could trade many of your big prospects like Syndergaard maybe, even though he's been injured this year a little bit. But not, nothing serious so far. Maybe you could try to get a, a top prospect from the Cubs. That's the way to go. But anyway, the point is that trades are going to have to be the way the Mets build their team. And it could be done. Billy Bean's done it in Oakland. So, it could happen that way. It's possible. Sandy Orson and the front office are going to have to... Their legacy, their legacy going from right now, this is their fourth year. It's time for them to build a competitive team. Their legacy at, is going to really come down to how they negotiate either from the trade, the trade deadline in July of this year to the offseason coming up in the fall, in October, November. How they negotiate the trades that they have to make coming up now. That's going to determine what the Mets are for the next few years. Would it be a competitive cycle of five or seven years of you know guaranteed playoffs, big market team again, building the revenue back up, fans going to the ballpark, a good team to watch, a year in year contender, which is what we all want and we all deserve as Mets fans, or would it be more of the same, mediocrity, rebuilding, waiting for the next crop of minor league pitchers? How the Mets handle the next two to seven months, that's going to determine the answer to that question. Thank you.